In this video, we're going to talk about getting notifications for successful refresh of data. Uh, I've gotten this question a few times recently, you know, in the community and at work, uh, and I've given an answer that I said would probably work, and I went ahead just to confirm that it would, and I thought I'd make a video to, to share that. Um, so if you go up to the Power BI service and say you have a a report that a uh, data set and report that you've you've published and you go and you can look at the refresh settings for the report and say you set it up with scheduled refresh there's an option here to send refresh failure notifications um, so this works great um, if you have a failure but these people wanted to go, hey, this is really important that I know that refresh was successful. So what are my options? And I said, well, you should be able to do it with alerts. Uh, and so I, this is that's what this video is about. So if I go back to this report, um, let me just briefly describe the report and the data set. So basically, uh, I have a SharePoint list that I've created that's capturing it. I have Power Automate flow that's going out and getting weather data every four hours for my local area in Indianapolis uh, and storing that in a SharePoint list and uh, storing you know, temperature, wind, uh, and humidity values. Uh, and then I want to publish this out to the service. Um, and just to show you real quick what that flow looks like and the SharePoint list. So this is the SharePoint list, real simple one. So again, not a lot of rows in this data, but this uh, same concept will apply at large scale as well. Um, you know, capturing these values uh, every four hours. I've got Power Automate that's uh, getting the data and writing it to SharePoint for me. So this is just set to every four hours. This is a standard action to go get the weather for the zip code or city that you want. And then I've got the crate items uh, every time. Uh, and then I just go ahead and now that I know I've added new data, go ahead and refresh my data set. And a lot of people will use a good technique where they'll have uh, a flow that involves refreshing a data set. And if it's a reliable refresh, um, say it takes 15 minutes, you know, you can put a delay in here for wait, say 30 minutes just to have some cushion there and then send your emails or whatever to say it's refreshed. And, and most of the time that works great. But um, if it happens to fail, this all this is is the trigger of the of the refresh. It's not the success of the refresh. Um, so in those situations, there's uh, another approach you can do, and that's and that's using alerts. Okay. Uh, so that's what we'll talk about. So if I go to that report that I've published, I have um, a, a simple report page, right? So this is your report page. Uh, but if I edit this, I also have a hidden page here where I've created some alerts. And I'll drop down to the desktop to show you these measures in a second. Um, but I've got uh, six different things I'll show you. Um, and just in case you haven't set up uh, alerts yet, you can't do it from a report. You actually have to do it from uh, a dashboard. And so I've already created a dashboard. And basically, you can pin the visual here. And you'll get an op opportunity to create a new dashboard or pin it to an existing one. I've already created one called Four Alerts um, uh, that has these six on it. So I'm not going to uh, repeat that. So we'll, we'll go to that dashboard in a second. Um, but I want to go through these uh, six measures that I just put in a simple card for the sole purpose of being alerts. And you see this alerts page is hidden. You could also do this on a separate a report that just goes to the same data set. It doesn't have to be in the same report. Uh, I just did it this way. Um, and also the, dash, the dashboard that I create um, is not going to be customer or consumer facing as well. This is solely for the purpose of, of me getting my refresh alerts. Um, and I'm going to show you here, you can not only get uh, uh, notified on refresh success, you can also do some simple data quality checks as well. Because sometimes, say you're... Uh, pulling data from a source that is in itself refreshed, and maybe it has old data in it, uh, Power BI will refresh against that uh, happily and everything looks great, uh, but you actually just refreshed against old data. So I'll, I'll mention um, some different approaches you can take here. So the top one is just the typical use of an alert. I've got something that I'm measuring and I wanna get alerted if it, if it meets a, 
a certain value. And the, th the thing with alerts is they have to um, exceed the threshold, either above or below. Um, they have to be different than the last time it refreshed, which is something to be aware of. Um, and third, it has to be um, more than once a day or once an hour, depending on the setting and the service. And we'll, we'll see that in a second uh, when we do the alerts. So this is, again, just the typical use of um, an alert where I just said, hey, you know, go refresh after we have new um, temperature data. And I've just got a measure here that just gets the, the latest date, uh, the latest temperature for uh, whatever the latest date time is. Um, and so, you know, if it's if it gets above, you know, 20, 40 degrees, whatever, I set it low so that they would, it would always be triggered, um, I would get uh, an email alert. And these alerts you can also use to trigger a flow so that you can do other stuff as well if a uh, alert condition is met. Okay. I mentioned just a second ago, the value has to change. So I also created uh, an alert and I called the measure doesn't change. And in this case, I'm, it's the same kind of measure as this, but it's the min date time. So that first value and that first value doesn't change. And every time I refresh, it gets the same value of 44 degrees. Um, and so I did get an alert the first time, but I haven't gotten one since. Um, so that's something to be aware of that if you had something, say it pegged a, a value and exceeded some threshold, but it never itself changed, you would not getting you would not get re-alerted uh, that it happened. So one trick you can do is you can uh, combine something that is changing with something so that uh, you can guarantee that you get a change. So if I look over here at this force change measure, um, I'm basically still getting this doesn't change measure but I'm adding to it something that's always changing. So every refresh, the now value, the current date time is changing. I'm dividing that by uh, a million, I guess, uh, so that it doesn't really change the result. If I'm worried about what's happening over here at the, the integer space, um, you know, this isn't affecting it. So I still can get re-notified even though it's still uh, 44. Right, it hasn't changed from the last time. Um, and this one has been reliably giving me alerts every time it refreshes. So if we talk about um, data kind of quality checks, um, one thing is you could have a, write a measure that just simply looks at the row count. Um, and again, if you want to just always get alerted as long as it's always increasing um, and therefore changing, you know, you can just do a simple count rows. Um, but if you have specific ideas of how much it should change, that kind of stuff, um, or, or what your minimum row count should be. So if you did a refresh and you got 100 rows where you should have a million, uh, you know, you could, you could set a threshold and, and get notified uh, about that. Um, this one, because I, every time I refresh, I've got another row of data. Uh, this one has been reliably notifying me as well. Um, another good one, I mentioned the scenario where if you're refreshing against a source that is itself on some sort of a scheduled refresh and say something goes wrong with that, um, this would be a way to, you know, check uh, sort of what the maybe the max they say you expect um, transactions every day uh, or every hour or whatever. Um, you could use a measure like this and basically go get the max of the of the data and compare it to now. And be, in my case, because I'm refreshing every four hours, uh, I did this and I checked to make sure, you know, if it gets more than six, then something's wrong with my source. Maybe my flow stopped working or whatever. Um, so again, if you refresh daily, you would compare this against the today date. And if it's greater than one, you know, let me know. That, so again, even though Power BI refreshed, it may have refreshed with old data. Um, and it's an issue I want to be aware of uh, and address. Okay. The last one here is just, I just called it now as number. So if you don't want to do data quality checks and all you want to do is get notified every time you have a single refresh, this might be the way to go. And again, all this one is, is as the name implies, you're just using the now function um, and I'm turning it into an integer and I multiplied it uh, by 100. I'm not sure why. Um, and again, this one you could use and just every single time it refreshes, you'll, you can get uh, that email alert or you can use it to trigger a, a flow. Okay, so if I go up into the service, you know, so that's the gist. So this is published up on the service. We talked about the um, the refresh alerts, and so I have this dashboard called For Alerts, uh, which is what I pinned all of those visuals to. And you can see here these four 
that have the little notification symbols on them. This has been running for a couple of days now, so there's a bunch of notifications. Uh, these have been sending me alerts, whereas these two, after the first refresh, uh, have not, um, because I've been getting data every four hours. My data has been staying uh, up to date. Um, and uh, so if you, just to set these, you'd, you'd put this card here. Again, this is not a, a dashboard that I would have consumer facing, you know, I would hide this from the app that I may publish to share my thing. And you would just go here, hit the ellipsis and do manage alerts. And this is just what the interface looks like here. You can set up more than one. Each of these, I just have a single one on there. And um, I've just, again, I wanted it to trigger. So I left the temperature low uh, and then I put it at most once an hour so that every four hours, uh, I get my alerts. So this is where you can set it once a day or once an hour so you don't get bugged with those. And you can do send send me an email too. Um, and again, you also can use Power Automate uh, to, uh, one of the triggers for Power Automate is, you know, when an alert is received or when an alert is triggered, then you can take uh, whatever actions, whether it's emailing people or, or doing whatever. Um, for this one, I just use the, uh, send me an email. And so you can see, you know, these last four, every four hours have been reliably uh, sending me alerts. Okay. So hopefully if you're in a situation uh, where you really need to know that refresh is done, or you want to do some data quality checks that I need it to be done, but I also need it to be correct. Uh, hopefully this technique will work for you.